Hello and welcome to Chini Vision. This time we're getting portable with the Amstrad Pen Pad. Don't usually do unboxing videos here on Chini Vision, but I thought I'd make an exception for this because it is boxed. It's an Amstrad Pen Pad from 1993. It's user friendly, the PDA 600, and it's still got its uh, Parcel Force Data Post sticker on it. Um, presumably this was just sent through the <laughs> courier system without any external protection, <laughs> just, just like this. Um, so it's a bit battered and still got its securing uh, parcel tape around it. Um, claimed up to 40 hours usage from batteries and memory expanded about 2 megabytes. Uh, can take standard PCMA cards and weighs less than 400 grams. And there's also French, German, Italian and some other language on the back there. Um, and claims to have lots of features, including a fully featured calculator, and that seems to be it. Um, <laughs> it's a PDA, and if you're thinking this thing could be like the Apple Newton, well, yes, except Amstrad didn't know the Apple Newton was coming to market when they started developing this, and in fact, um, it came as a surprise to them, and when they launched it, they managed to launch it a couple of weeks before the Newton hit the market. Um, I think I mentioned it's from 1993, so we're going to open this thing up. Um, comes with a memory card, apparently I can't see a lot of this stuff here. Now, there's a thing known about these, that the um, cases on them turn to gloop. Um, they had, what's that? Oh, that's going to not sound good in the microphone. The cases turned to gloop because they had a rubberized uh, tactile coating on the case, and uh, like many other devices. I've, I've got a mouse from five years ago, the tactile rubber coating that's gone to horrible gloop. So I'm expecting this thing has probably disintegrated into a horrible, horrible mess. So much that I've got my rubber glove, okay, I, only, I could only find one, on a standby. So it's, it's a um, kind of screen that you use a stylus on. So we've got some spare stylus, styli there. That one's uh, been, oh, you see that's already feeling yeah this is going to be bad that that feels sticky and horrible even though it's not rubberized it's because it's been in the case with this thing that that's plastic not rubberized but it's gone horrible oh this does not bode well another one got some documents your amstrad guarantee this is warranty got a warranty period of one year the benefits provided within this guarantee are additional to all other rights and remedies in respect of the product which the consumer has under the Trade Practices Act and other similar state and territory laws. This Amstrad product has been fully tested and inspected. It is guaranteed against mechanical and electrical de electronic defects for the above stated period, commencing the date of its purchase. Oh dear. Well, okay. Should this Amstrad product blah, blah, blah. Oh, we're going to send that back as well. Right, okay. Um, that's in German. Uh, it's like Italian. More Amstrad did not like putting some paperwork in there. Um, I've noticed, um, I, I haven't seen the design document for this, but Amstrad did like, certainly for the Amstrad Pluses, to have one packaging and one set of documentation for all the territories because it was far, far cheaper, which is why I've got these different languages on the back there of the packaging. Uh, Netherlands. Belgium. Uh... Two, I've got two for Belgium. Two guarantee cards for Belgium. Um, UK customers only. Congratulations on purchasing a fine Amstrad product. To mark our confidence in your new Amstrad product, which has been fully tested and inspected, it comes with this guarantee. Yeah. Um, right, now, these are stickers, and we've got... Um, we appear to have many languages here. Uh, they are presumably to stick on the back of the pen pad to uh, show you um, what all the controls do. So there's that's uh, find the English one. That's oh, there's the English one there. Contrast add page calculator desk clock anniversaries. That's your PDA. It really does seem to only do basic PDA functions anyway. Right down to business. Oh yes. Right. Oh, it feels sticky already, and you know, it's not even out the plastic 
case. Yuck. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I need a glove. I need a glove. It's probably quite a specialised YouTube channel that uh, someone's got to put a latex glove on for. And I know Ashens did a Pete. I know Ashens did one video about a pen pad a few years ago. I remember it because he asked me about why this has gone uh, all sticky. And this one has gone all... I'm not going to touch it with my fingers. Oh, my. This is... Uh, yeah. It's weird. It's all gone. It's all marked and... Oh, it feels horrible. Look at that. If you can hear that. Let me hold it up against the microphone. That's my finger coming away from the pen pad. Sticks. So, this is the Amstrad pen pad, the PDA 600. Um, quite a nice, nice little device, size of a book. That must be where the battery, the backup battery goes in. There's a space there for your stylus in there like that um right let's open her up all oh, the insides more pristine i bet you if i scrape the stylus over that oh look look it's all coming away on the stylus that's what the rubberized coating there i'll get a close-up that's what it should look like when it was new <laughs> you can see it's just disintegrated in a horrible way the other backup battery things falling out there Is that rust on there was it gloop i don't know put that out the way so this is the uh, pen pad i'll get a close up in there of that what that all looks like so the pen pad was as i say developed by amstrad in 1993 with cliff lawson a name you've probably heard of before as the lead designer. It has handwriting recognition, which hopefully we'll see when I fire this thing up. I haven't even put batteries in it yet. And this was developed by a company called Eden uh, Software. It has 128K of memory, and obviously the, the although this thing talks about a 256K upgrade on the box, um, it could synchronize with Windows with some extra software. And um, yeah, the software was not wasn't Eden software. It was Eden Group. I know that because I've got Wikipedia open on my iPad next to it because I'm taking some of this info off Wikipedia. But that's the size of the pen pad there compared to an iPad. Um, and yeah, so what happened with this is it wasn't a success. Um, Amstrad ended up dumping this on the market. Uh, via Tandys, if you were in Tandys around 94, 95, you'd have seen these being sold off about £50 a unit. £50 a unit is what it cost Amstrad to make each of these. And um, I think the retail price was about 399 something like that. Um, I'll put that up on the screen. But um, yeah, it cost Amstrad about £50 to make each of these, and they ended up being sold in Tandys for £50. So Amstrad were basically selling these off at below or below their cost price by the time you get them to the shops and whatever ta that Tandy paid them for the units. So, um, it's all touch screen. You've got little, it's a very early example of this kind of display, uh, this icons around the edge of the screen that we've seen later with sound devices and things. And I've got the Amstrad logo there. And only one button there, which I believe is the on-off button. So I can't hold off this any longer. We're going to have to stick some batteries in this thing so i'm gonna oh uh, why did i touch it with that hand flip it over and i'm also going to see what this card is in if it comes oh, i'm stuck to the pen pad we have got a pcm cia card what is it it's a dummy card it's a dummy card so what happened with this extra uh that's fine that doesn't feel sticky at all um it's got, it's, it's, uh, well, it's got a little bit of contamination from the case, but um, it's pretty much okay. Right, so where's the battery compartment? Oh, dear. Does it come off there? Oh, 
am I touching it? There we go. Right. Warning, never move the batteries so the pen pad is switched on or all data will be lost. Well, what's the point of a backup battery then if it... Oh, I suppose when it's on. Okay. Oh, my hand's gone. I've touched it. I've touched the pen pad. My hand is all sticky. Got to find some batteries. Jump cut. I'm back with all sorts of batteries to put in this thing. So it's going to want two AA batteries. Apparently it gives you 40 hours of power. 40 hours. That ain't bad, is it really? I'm touching it with my hand again. Which way did the batteries go in? Oh, it wants three. It wants three batteries. Okay. Even so, three batteries, 40 hours if it, if, if it does what it claims. It does. Oh, I'm getting it. Right, that's in. Do I need to stick a lithium cell in there? C2032. C2032. Thanks, seven day shop. Yeah, this is a this is high octane chinny vision. It's me getting things out of. How's that going? I touched it again. Why do I keep touching it? Right. That seems to be in. Can I get this thing back in the That seems to be on, not properly on, but it seems to be on. Right, everything out of the way. Let's go for some pen pad action. There we go. Oh, again, I just, ugh, it's horrible. Never touch one of these things with your bare hands. I'm gonna turn it on. Oh, it's beeped, it's beeped, pen pad. Can't remotely see the screen here from here. There's no instruction manual in with it. What do I do? Touch that. Oh, I've got, well, I can see something. Can you guys see anything? I'm going to adjust the camera so you can get see a better bit of the screen there. Right, that's probably as good as we're going to get off this LCD. I can't see a thing. All I can see is the glare from the screen. So. Select English. Yep. Place pen in the center of each box until the beep. All right, waiting for a beep. Worst game ever. Not getting much of a beep here. Not going very far at all. Let's move over here a second. Right, I've done that. Um, I've put the camera back there, the prime pad back there for you. I was holding it down for about a minute in each box. Nothing happened. Then I started pressing on other bits of the screen and then it beeped. So I don't know how much further we're going to get here, but uh, we can give this a go. Hopefully you can still see the screen there because I've moved it around whilst I was trying to fill around with it. I don't even know if this is going to register properly now. Right. Use the arrows to tell, select a date. So I'm going to give this a go. We're going to have to get this under 2016, aren't we? Despite that registration thing not working properly, it actually seems accurate at the moment. It's weird. Where it said click on the boxes, um, it wasn't letting me, but above and below the boxes, it was. Right, 
Right, still scrolling through the dates. 1998, remember 1998? Oh, oh no. <laughs> you know, I can't cope with anything past 1998 or I've, in the funny angle I am here, um, I, I pressed the wrong button. You would have seen, I, I couldn't. So the time, um, So, so you've set the time, then what do you do? There's no OK button. Ah, you hit the, ah, you hit the tick button. It's, it's not very intuitive, really. Well, I know it's a big honking great big tick there, but you would have thought there'd be an OK button down there. I'm sorry this screen isn't that clean because the gunk from the uh, pen pad appears to have gone over the screen. I'm going to get a wipe and come back in a second and just try and wipe the gunk and rubbish off this screen. The screen has been wiped. It's not going to be much better because all this gunk has just infected the side of the screen. Now I really need to go at it to do it, but don't have time now. So hopefully it looks a little bit better. There is a contrast button on here as well, which I'm hoping I'll be able to uh, activate and get a better, better picture for you. So now we have the alphabet. Now you've got to enter for the handwriting recognition to work. You've got to enter in all the characters of the alphabet in your own handwriting so and i'm at a funny angle here and my handwriting isn't the best in the world so i'm going to also wipe the end of this stylus while i remember because it's also covered in gunk and nasty stuff um right so this is my glove now looks really manky right so let's try a that didn't really Register did it. Uh, clear. A. Mm. A. This touch this touch screen calibration is out on certain places. It works on some things, but other things it's just not. So I can't. So I'm way out there. That calibration is just. I'll try and do it there. Ah, uh, it's impossible to write on this screen. You, you end up writing like a five-year-old. But the calibration on parts of the screen is way... At centre, it's fine. But... The further away from the centre you get, it just, it's just completely out. Is it one there, H? Yeah, it's just so out. And it gets towards the centre. It's, it's impossible. How could anybody, even ignoring the calibration issues here, this screen is impossible to write on. L, M, yeah, let's tick all that. Tick, tick, not going to go to all that, yeah. Oh, you've got to do all lowercase as well. W. No, it's so out. See, I, I was on the edge of the box there, and it's just over there. You. But in the middle of the screen, it's fine. I've got all the numbers, sim symbols as well. Oh, right. We are booted. We are in. Pen pad. Right, let's see if I get that contrast. That's the contrast button there. Do anything? Oh, it does. I think it does. Yep, that gets darker and darker and darker. Zoom it goes back to normal. Oh, I see. That's clever. The left-hand side, you go one way, and the black side, you go the other. So I, hope, I wonder if you can see that there.
I don't know how well that I don't know how well that works for you. So we've got some applications here. Uh, there is a what that is doesn't do anything. Calculator, calculator. Two. Two. Times three. You see, the, for this, the calibration seems to be okay. I can't see the equals from the angle. I, <laughs> I can't see the equals. Is that two times three equals five? Five? I must have typed something else. I don't know. Or hit some other button. Anyway, the interface here has been designed without many words on it because Amstrad wanted this to be multilingual. So it's all icons and card. I mean, ultimately, it's a glorified file effects. Um, and you can enter your diary into there. You can enter your contact details into there. And you can handwrite notes. And that's about it, really. I can't get into some of this stuff here. It could be a screen calibration thing. Um, some things work, some things don't. I don't have the manual, unfortunately. Um, but the idea was you'd carry this around in your pocket. So, the Amstrad pen pad. Well, it beat the Newton to market. And we all know the Newton was absolutely useless. And the handwriting recognition in it didn't work. Well, unfortunately... This thing is also absolutely useless, and we know from other people's experiences, the handwriting recognition also doesn't work. It was incredibly expensive when it came out, and they all ended up being dumped at £50 in Tandys, and I suspect that's where most people got these from. This one wouldn't have done, because this one's clearly gone through a courier system from the labels. Um, Alan Sugar says this is his greatest mistake and not for the reasons that you'd think. You'd think he'd think this is the greatest mistake because it cost him a load of money. But no, they actually had the next generation in pen pad already in development where this one was just being finished off because Alan Sugar thought this kind of thing was the future. And he was right. We have electronic PDAs in our phones. We have our iPads. This kind of thing did take off with things like the Nokia communicator, although it was always with telephone devices and Alan Sugar says well we should have stuck with this and persevered because he he later bought a mobile phone company Dan Cell in I think Denmark somewhere like that Finland somewhere like that and they could have integrated all this technology they had into the it was Dan Call Dan Call um the Dan Call mobile phones and it they could have given Amstrad a huge lead because this thing's very much first generation um yeah, so yeah, that's why he regrets it because he thinks he could have integrated all this into his other products and he might have had something that was pretty special. But as it stands, the pen pad really is a curiosity. It was absolutely useless at the time. Um, a yuppie accessory launched in the middle of a recession when people couldn't afford to buy this kind of stuff. Um, it's very, very limited in what it does. And if you're going to buy one, well, they don't cost much money and with good reason. I mean, look at the state of it. You can't put this on a shelf and look at it. And if you do get one that is pristine, it's going to still all be like that. That, that is going to happen to it. It will look as pristine as that rubber there. And you think, this looks lovely. You put your finger... I'm going to put my finger on it. And look, I've left a finger mark there. Um, my finger is now sticky horrible and smells slightly of nasty rubber um it's a curiosity it's even amstrad collectors don't really want these things um it's interesting thing to look at and historically interesting to look at a video like this and see one actually running or kind of running but to use it no it's absolutely useless and to own one it's a complete liability it's just i mean ugh Look at it. Um, nice try from Amstrad. Nice technology at the time. It is user friendly. But unfortunately, these days, these things are as ugly as anything and sticky as a explosion in a toffee factory. 
best avoided, I'm afraid, even if you are a hardcore Amstrad collector. <laughs> 